There are several essays recommended in, in this edition, and you'll find links to all of them in the written post. It's been a continuous flow in the open sewer that is the law-breaking, ethics-spurning, moral-smashing of Donald Trump and his mob of democracy destroyers. So when I came across the picture at the top right corner of the written post of the White House seal showing an outhouse, I knew it had to be included here. But am I making a mistake? Let's see. The assaults on the institutions we revere, the attacks on whole races of people, the calls for violence against protesters, the dissing of our allies, the refusal to stop a foreign power from attacking us, and now the kidnapping and abuse of thousands of children have left millions of us enraged, and that's a problem. Human being 101, when attacked, we either fight or flee. It's the kind of fight that's going on now that's the problem. And it's my contention that we may be shooting ourselves in the foot by the way we're fighting. For a long time, people on the left have felt attacked, and rightly so, as far-right thugs have spewed hatred and lies. My notion is that the modern-day onslaught of this started with President Reagan's run for the presidency in 1980 when he was famously bashing all welfare, and he called out a welfare queen on the south side of Chicago. When challenged repeatedly, he finally had to concede that neither he nor anyone in his campaign could name a single example of a welfare queen in Chicago or anywhere else. Nevertheless, his lie demonized powerfully, and nobody missed that dog whistle to racism that made lefties furious. Since then, there have been the lies and vitriol spewed by Fox News, Newt Gingrich, Eric Cantor, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, Alex Jones, and the birther in chief. And likely you're continuously angry about all of that. That's the stuff that fires us into a fit of human being 101 attack mode, like Maxine Waters making herself the national cheerleader for public shaming. Oddly enough, that's the same kind of anger response that drove Tea Party or Joe Wilson to inappropriately yell, you lie, during President Obama's address to Congress in September 2009. It's what drives all of Trump's 27 to 38 percent. The direction is polar opposite to that of lefties, but the shaming anger response is identical. I abhor false equivalencies and other frauds, but this one, in principle, is no sham. Public shaming, humiliating and demonizing, and hate spewing are wrong. It doesn't matter who's doing it. I get that we feel justified and powerful when we do that, but that's just the hormones of rage in our veins. What's really happening is that we're making things worse. That's worse as in counterproductive. We give righty hate mongers the justification to hate even more, and we actually generate new recruits to their side as well. Read Jonathan Martin's article about this and be sure to see Michelle Goldberg's brilliant piece to understand this better. Want to see how truly counterproductive this public shaming of righties really is for Democrats? Read the piece from the Wall Street Journal editorial board because they're spot on. These essays make clear what being a slave to adrenaline and testosterone will do to us. Just in case you don't like the gun to foot picture in the written post, and find it persuasive of the counterproductive nature of public shaming? Read Frank Bruni's piece, Public Shaming Feels Good. That's no reason to do it. If you want to honor your frustration and passion, read John Pavlovitz's essay. Note that his anger is right there for all to see and feel. Humiliation and shaming are not. Translation, bring your anger, your frustration, and your passion but leave your hate and the need to hurt others far behind you. Maybe we can start to make things better. So maybe, now for sure, I shouldn't have included the White House picture in this offering because all it does is to make things worse. Public shaming is not only wrong, it's politically stupid. Wise up, Democrats. On the other hand, I'm every bit as incensed as you, and not only won't I allow bullies to beat me up and steal from me, I won't allow them to do that to anyone else either. That includes mothers with nursing infants in McAllen, Texas, and poor people in North Carolina who want to vote. I still believe public shaming will likely be counterproductive, but maybe the real issue isn't civility. 
It's all too easy to go too far on the high ground of civility, like the 1934 admonition to Jews to be civil with the Nazis. You have to link through and see this for yourself. Get this, thugs only understand one thing, a harder punch in the nose. So let's not be stupid about this. Let's not, it's not about civility. It's about stopping the thugs who are destroying our country. It's about setting things right again. It's time to stop bringing spitballs to a gunfight. It's time to fight back with equivalents plus one so that we hit back harder. To Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and the rest of our tired septuagenarian leadership, your sell-by date is long past. Give it up to someone with fire in their belly. I'm Jack Altshuler.